So in the next few videos, we're going to look at inverses of the hyperbolic functions, right? And we'll start with, with hyperbolic sine because it's fairly clear from the graph that this is a one-to-one -one function, right? It's increasing over its entire domain, or, or, or if you like, the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine, which is always positive, right? So this is always increasing. So it's definitely a one-to-one -one function. We expect that we should be able to find an inverse. How do we do it? Well, one way you could proceed is you could proceed in the same way that we did for the inverse trig functions, right? Only in this case, at least, we don't need to worry about domains and ranges. And we can say, okay, well, suppose, suppose y is equal to sinh inverse x, right? Well, we know that that's the same thing as saying sinh y is equal to x, okay? So we can take the derivative of both sides of this equation, right? Take the derivative of the left-hand side, we get cosh y. But we're taking the derivative with respect to x, right? So y is some function of x, it's this, right? So we get cosh y times dy dx, and on the other side, 1. Okay. So, all right, on the one hand, we could say this. We could say f prime of x is 1 over cosh y. Not really satisfying, right? What is cosh y? Well, we can come to here. I mean, y is, is, is sinh inverse of x, so we can say cosh of sinh inverse of x. But, you know, just like with the trig functions, we don't like to leave it like that. So what we can do is we can say that um, cosh squared y is equal to 1 plus sinh squared y. Right? Bring that over, okay? Okay, ah, but sinh y is just x, so this is 1 plus x squared, right? And again, because hyperbolic cosine is always positive, we take positive square root here, and we get the square root of 1 plus x squared. Good. So we get 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared, right? Not bad. Um, and, and by the way, this does hint at something. If you think back to when we were doing trigonometric substitution, we said, well, if you see that 1 plus x squared pattern, you should be doing a tangent substitution because we think about the derivative of arc tan, we get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, this is suggesting that, you know, another option that you could use is you could use a uh, hyperbolic sine substitution rather than a hyperbolic tan substitution. You're going to get similar results. Okay. So that's good. Um, but actually, there, there's another thing we can do which is quite interesting. This is sort of the only option that we have when we're dealing with the trig functions because we don't really know how to express inverse trig functions in any other way, right? I mean, trig functions are defined in terms of the circle. We don't have other elementary functions that we can express trig functions in terms of. But for, for hyperbolic trig functions, we do. They're defined in terms of exponentials, right? So if we come to this equation here, what does it say? It says that x is equal to e to the y, right, minus e to the minus y over 2. So what can we do with that? Well. We can uh, multiply by 2, so 2x is equal to e to the y, subtract e to the minus y. Uh, I'm also going to multiply by e to the y. 2x e to the y is equal to e to the 2y minus 1. Now, rearrange a little bit e to the 2y, and remember e to the 2y means e to the y squared plus, sorry, minus 2x times e to the y 
minus 1 equals 0. How do we solve that equation? Well, it's quadratic in e to the y. Try quadratic formula. Quadratic formula says e to the y is going to be minus b, so 2x plus or minus square root of b squared, 4x squared, minus 4ac, right? Well, a is 1, c is minus 1, so that's just plus 4 over 2, okay? So if we factor a 4 out from here, pull it out of the square root, square root of 4 gives me 2, uh, we get this. We get x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, square root of x squared plus 1, that's um, bigger than x in absolute value, right? Um, so when we're trying to decide between the positive and negative roots, we realize, well, e to the y, right, I mean, Exponentials are never negative, so this is a positive number. Okay, so e to the y, never negative. So we have to take the positive root. So e to the y is x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And so y, which is the thing that we want, we can actually express the inverse hyperbolic sine function in terms of elementary functions. It's the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, right? And even if x is negative, uh, this will be positive, right? Because this, this is a positive square root. Absolute value is bigger than x, so this sum will always be positive. Natural log is always defined. Um, so now we actually have this expression. We have y as a function of x. And so another way that we could have found f prime is we could just, we can do chain rule. Um, now, it's an interesting exercise. It'll test your algebraic skill. But, you know, try this as an exercise. It's, it's, it's worth trying. Um, what happens if you actually take the derivative of this thing? Does it work out? Um, Let's think about it. Uh, what would we get if we tried to do this directly? f prime of x, right? We would get 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, right? 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside will be 1 plus. So when we take the derivative of this, we're going to get x over square root x squared plus 1. Okay? All right, because power rule, 1 half comes down, we get this thing to the minus 1 half, the derivative of the inside is a 2x, simplify, you get to there. Okay, can you see it now? If you get a common denominator for this thing, right, this is going to be, so this would come up, for the common denominator, you get root x squared plus 1 plus x all over just the root of x squared plus 1. That numerator that you get once you get it over a common denominator cancels with that, leaves you with same derivative that we had before. Okay, kind of cool.